All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our final quarterfinal of this evening's action. It is between Germany and Austria. Please welcome first to the stage from Germany, Frank Burns. And his opponent from Austria, Marco Straub. Once again, a warm welcome here for the men's quarterfinals here at the WDF World Cup in Espia in Denmark. This is the fourth quarterfinal between Frank Bruns from Germany and also Markus Straub from Austria. We have seen plenty of good darts in the first three quarterfinals and now we hope to see another great game. I'm Daniel and with me here I have Shaq. Thank you so much for coming. No problem. Glad to be here. And if you know darts then you probably know Shaq as well. So it's great to have a real darting expert by my side. But even you Shaq I imagine wouldn't know too much about these two players. No, I'm going to be quite honest. No, I don't know too much about them. We know a little bit about them. Uh, we know it, for instance, what they've done this tournament. So they have had some really good performances here. Bruns, the German, he beat, amongst others, uh, Philip Jubenko from Croatia in the last uh, 16 that got him into this uh, round. He uh, also beat uh, Justin Hewitt from Gibraltar and František Mika from Slovakia. So had a good run up to this tournament. And Frank is from Oldenburg in Germany. And he's 46. So we know a little, but we don't know a lot. And if you look at his tournaments he's played and he hasn't played in many many ranking tournaments either so he is a bit of an unknown but his opponent is basically the same <laughs> but what me and Christian just spoke about in in the last game was exactly the same that the two players we, we didn't know too much about them but well you, there you go 90 average averages I mean just because you don't necessarily know the players that doesn't mean that we can't expect great darts from both of them. 
Yeah, exactly. And in the end, averages are nice. They're always good for the people at home and for us to talk <laughs> about. But in the end, the most important thing is that you get five legs on the board. It doesn't really matter how you get them. I'm sure that the one that wins tomorrow, he don't care. Yeah, that's a good point. And Marcus will be trying to make a point here with two trebles and a double 19. Is that in? Yep, it is. But that one isn't. A really good effort. Leaves Bruns with double eight for the break in the first leg. He gets it second dot. A good start for the German. And Marcus has a little bit of a history, especially in World and Europe Cups. He's played in quite a few of them, even as a uh, youth player. So he knows a little bit about it. He was already playing for Austria in 2019 as well, when we were in Romania. Austria is one of them countries that seems to invest a lot in the youth uh, system. It's actually an Austrian that is the head of the youth in the WDF, so that helps. <laughs> no doubt. It helps to get your message across. But there's a few countries where you can see that they invest a lot in the youth. Ireland is one, I think. Hungary, a lot of youth. Austria is one. And then we have the traditional countries, obviously, as England, Netherlands, but you almost come to expect them to provide youth players. Germany has also been a breeding ground for a lot of good youth players. And we have one more tomorrow in the final from Germany. Yeah, just if you go through the history books, there's no doubt that it's especially England and Holland who has dominated the youth game. But you have also seen these players from Germany, like Max Hopp, from Austria, like Roby, John and his brothers. And from Belgium, Dimitri van Berg, Kenny Nains, um, who has been brilliant on, on the youth scene so it's just it's just great to to see these players be good as youth players but then also actually playing well when they get into the senior levels yeah sometimes take a little while but uh, some of them grow more quickly i think nowadays it's easier to go from junior to senior because in the past it was 18 years and once you're 18 you had to go to the seniors now there's the youth and development tour which gives you a few more years to develop into a senior player but still a lot more and better opponents now than there were just a few years ago when i was a youth player so i don't have any excuses and I, I won't bore you with my youth uh, <laughs> playing <laughs> All right, Marcus here with a chance, now double nine. And two 17 darters to start the match, not too bad. That means they're level now at one apiece. And let's not forget, it's actually a few days ago since they played the floor matches in, in this men's single event. And it is difficult to, even though they have played other darts the last few days, it is difficult to, well, be this well going into a tournament and then you have to come up to, up to the stage and then deliver your A game. But that's what we have seen in the other quarterfinals. Um, only one average below 80, which I think is, is very good. Yeah, and what you see, look, they have been playing all day, every day here. So, I mean, they're not short on practice, that's for sure. But it is difficult, but there's no other way to do it. The, the, the amount of entries into these cups is becoming so big that you have to play it on multiple days. And the organization really wanted to have some men's action on the Friday night. So that means you have to split it again because traditionally we play on Saturday always the finals. Well, it's good preparation. You only need one uh, good match today. That's true. You can focus and prepare on this match only. 152 for Straub. Gets the first treble. 
And when he gets the first, he usually gets the second for double 16. And that goes in, a 1-5-2 for Marcus Traub. We've seen some good checkouts so far. 160 with the youth players and a 151 in the last one. So we can add this to the tally. Yeah. And you can have, well, even though the players may be extremely good in the scoring part of the game, if they aren't clinical on the doubles, then it just breaks the rhythm of the game. Yep. Jack, you, you, as I said before, you follow a lot of darts. You have a, a very well-known website with a lot of statistics on the players. Do you still get, well, surprised when you see these players that we don't know too much about here as Marcus Stars puts in a great 180? When we see these players that we haven't really heard about before then come up here and, and produce... Yeah, this kind of, of, of good dance. Yeah, you see it every, uh, especially these World and Europe Cups, the WF, because they are the usually the players that only play locally. So these are the best players from Austria and Germany. Only because they don't play internationally, we tend to think the bubble is small, mm. they must be no good. But there's some decent players in here. And I think if you look at the professional scene at the moment, 90% of the players that play there they have all played in these cups and whoever you talk to uh, ask one of them players what is your proudest moment a lot of them will say representing my country on the WDF World Cup because yeah. it is special yeah and uh, it's a feeling you can't replicate great finish by Frank Bruns who picks out the 72 to level it to a piece with Straub waiting on tops Got a nice rhythm to it, this match. Yeah, it's been very enjoyable so far. Both players putting on a really good game. But yeah, that's one thing I'm, I often like to, to point out as well, that these players, yeah, it's not Gervin Price, it's not Michael van Gerwen. But <laughs> just look at this, they, they can still play darts. But, but my point is, these, most of the players that you watch on TV, that you watch in the Premier League, that you watch in Alexandra Palace, they have been here. So these are very much the stars of tomorrow. Yep, that's what it is. And you don't have to make a big secret out of it. This is the breeding ground for the professional game nowadays. You learn your trade in your country, then you go internationally. And then if you want to, you can go professional. It's not for everyone. But if you want to, that's, I think that is the route to take. And there's different stops along the way maybe, but that is the route to take. Straub looking for trouble 18. Yeah, it was a bit blocked. He's trying to step around it uh, again. Well, can't find the trouble. He finds the singles. Bruns is lacking a little bit behind in this leg. Another 16. We'll leave him on tops. Oh. Now you can see he was already in motion when he threw that dart. He didn't take the time to stand still and properly throw the dart. And when you're in motion, the dart goes usually to the five. He needs to take his time. Is that a marker or is that a blocker? A blocker. <laughs> but I wait until you throw the dart. Yeah, 112 for Bruns and he could steal this leg if he hits the double 16. Oh. Straub got away with that one. 
but he needs to be a little bit more clinical in this match. He's missed a few chances already. Double eight. Yeah, he's starting to think about it. You can see it. He's starting to think about it. Double four. And he's almost praying for that dart to go in. The praying usually doesn't help with darts. <laughs> and do you think experience is, is the key factor here? I think they're both pretty inexperienced, to be honest. Uh, I don't think Bruns has played on a lot of big stages in front of a few hundred people either. So I don't think that's a factor. Maybe life experience. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah. Because Straub, he's only 25 years young. And Bruns is in his mid 40s. It's quite good, uh, by the way. I mean, Austria, when I did the introductions on Monday night, they only have won two medals in WDF World Cup history, but they were both with the kids. Mm. They've never won a medal in the seniors. And they won a bronze in the pairs already. So they know that they've got the first medal and they couldn't stop shouting <laughs> that they had their first medal. But they could come a second one pretty quickly. And that very much is a testament also to the development of, of darts in Austria. They really are doing great things. So just going through his stats here, Marcus Straub, in the event so far, I mean, it's only four matches up until now, but his overall average has been about 81, which is decent, but his first nine average is 92. It's not brilliant, but it's, it's really good. Yeah, we always say that on a professional level, you need to score with your first nine above 100, north of 100. That is where you need to be. So it's not at all crazy to say that you need to be above 90 in these kinds of tournaments. That's where he is, so that's okay. As long as you hit your doubles, and he is hitting the doubles there where Straub is missing the doubles. And that leaves him with only one more leg. Bruns to make kind of an historical semi-final. We're going to have a look to see how many medals Germany has in the men's singles. That won't be many, I think. Only one ever in history. One bronze medal. I'm pretty sure I'm going to know what your next question is, so I'm already going to start looking. Yeah. Yeah, I knew. I knew you were going to say something. It's <laughs> <laughs> Both... Well, I have two questions. I mean, you already answered about Austria, but... I believe if we're talking about Denmark, yeah. then I know for a fact that we have two silver medals in um, from 2005, the one Per Lawson, and then back in the early 90s, I believe. But I yeah. don't know how many bronze medals we have, oh. if there's anyone. I have that question. I have the question <laughs> answered. That is not a problem. I'll have a look for you. Denmark in total has seven medals. Seven medals, there you go. Three Not silver, four bronze in the men's. That's in the men's only. In the ladies, Denmark has four medals, all bronze. And in the youth, you have four medals, all bronze. So in total, it's not a bad tally. One of them was today, actually in the. No, they don't. The they don't. They are not counting yet. So you've so got one more. So you are, if you count today's, you're on 16, three silvers, 12, and now 13 bronzes. So you're waiting for that golden one. Yeah. I remember I was uh, before Frank finishes. I was in Denmark in Copenhagen in 2008 for the Euro Cup, when Denmark won it. Yeah. Special moment. This could be a special moment for Frank Bruns. Double 16 for the match and a place in the semi-finals.
That's it, a solid 5-2 win for Frank Bruns. In the middle of the game, it seemed like Marcus Straub would come out as the winner, but Frank Bruns proved to be much more efficient on his doubles. So congratulations for both Frank and for Germany. And thank you as well to Shaq, who has just left the commentary box. He is a busy man these days. Plus, we have two more games on the stage. First, we have the ladies' pairs final. That's between England and Finland. And then after that, we have the men's pairs final. So keep your eyes on the screen. First, we will have a prize. Uh, sorry, first we will have a, a short, short break and then we will have the two finals in the pairs tournaments.